I'm Andrew. Humanity. I'm Megan. I'm Kyle. And I, 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 I. Okay, I know the, I know the context <laughs> beforehand. I do need to do, or I'm just gonna, or you know what? I'm, I'm gonna edit something else. Then <laughs> go ahead. I will hold the show cold with that conversation, and then just go to this. Of course, uh, we're your Thunder Geeks, uh, brought to you by our wonderful station, 102.7 FM, C-I-L-U, or around the world at L-U-Radio.ca. If this is your first time tuning in, uh... It bites. Hi, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Welcome to a new nail-biting episode. Co- COVID, the uh, the isolation is starting to get to us, I guess. <laughs> starting! <laughs> This Starting. Is welcome, welcome Megan. Megan back, and she's gone too far, as per usual. Did you guys miss me? I, I absolutely. <laughs> I missed you up until you started talking. Do y- you know how Oof. hard it is to do stuff like this to them without you? It's just. <laughs> I know because because it's like it's like you have an idea, and then I'm just like yes, and then I take it and I start running with it, laughing all the way because that's how I do. See, and that's why I made that specific clip from the anime about Megan. Why do you like this? <laughs> also, I'm you, sorry you for like... ruining your day, Kyle. <laughs> he lives with Rob. His day's already ruined. Hey, I'm oh. the okay roommate. Oh my goodness. I give myself a solid 6 out of 10. <laughs> no, 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 okay. You know what we're gonna do? We're I I don't want to try to edit that back, so I'm just gonna count us in again. We're gonna do it, Rob. You're really loud, so you are not picking up at all. We just ha- I've just had fuzz from you the whole time. Big sad. It's uh the fuzz is also coming from Kyle a little bit. I think it's the mic. Uh, I'm able to hear Kyle fine. Rob specifically cuts out. Rut row. Okay. Right, okay, okay, I'm just going to count us in, because trying to do that, that's that's going to be impossible. <laughs> Three, two, one. I'm Andrew. I'm Megan. I'm Kyle. And I'm Chris. And we're your Thunder Geeks. And we're your Thunder Geeks! Yay! Oh, Welcome again to another very special episode of Hi! We're your Thunder Geeks. Each week we like to get together, talk about the nerdy stuff we've been up to this week, what's going on in our community, and try to make us laugh for an hour and a half. Of course, brought to you by our wonderful station, 102.7 FM, C-I-L-U, all around the world at L-U-Radio.ca. Now, we have our wonderful, fantastic, uh, we've missed you, Megan. Welcome back, Megan. Oh, thank you. I missed you guys so much while I was fishing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard you were nail fishing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. I was uh, Kyle and fishing. Chris are absolutely devastated from our pre-show conversation, and of course, yes. if you wanna check that out you can do so on our facebook page at facebook.com slash thunder geek speak right you you, you, you no, can no, use no, youtube no. for that you can use that as a special bonus andrew scraps the opening so we read to it Hold on. <laughs> we're gonna run it back a second devastated is not the right d word to use for this it's heavily <laughs> disappointed clipping at the last of our patience <laughs> uh, distraught oh, maybe guys. Distraught. Hey, that's a very good word. Stepping on toes. <laughs> uh, how about distinguished? <laughs> how about get out? <laughs> Lexic. Uh, sure. I hate oh, my Delectable. Yeah. Stop. Delectable, yes! Delighted. <laughs> Divine. Finger food. I have a deep I want to call you, Andrew, right now, and I, I'm not gonna. Yeah, Dingleberry. <laughs> Charles Dickens. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, always gotta love the pre pre and post show convo. Welcome to Sesame Street. The letter of the word <laughs> A is F. I thought it was D. 
No, it was D. D. No, it's, it's F for respects. It's the letter <laughs> three. And the color's sad. So, good news. TikTok didn't get banned in America, so it hasn't imploded yet. No, no. Bad news. Kyle somehow still hasn't stumbled upon the clone high aspect that's been exploding. Megan, you explained it to me what was actually happening before the show because I was so confused. Where I'm like, yeah. I'm a happy clone for high suddenly going viral out of nowhere, but I have no idea what has caused it. And they all seem to be obsessed with JFK, which I liked him as a character, but he wasn't my like my favorite favorite. Oz. Okay, so basically, um, I guess. Um, I haven't seen Clone High pop up on any like other streaming like websites or anything like, but it's I found just on that TikTok. there is there is like the entirety of the first season and stuff like just on YouTube hanging out. I forget what it is called. It's like th cartoon throwback, cartoon retro stuff, and it's just but the entirety of it. So they might have discovered that first. But the thing is, is that like JFK being on TikTok right now makes a whole lot of sense because all the Zoomer kids that are, like, doing the memes right now, they're, like, obsessed with the JFK assassination for some strange reason. Umbrella Academy Season 2. Because what Sorry? I noticed specifically was a couple of weeks ago, what I started popping up a lot on my feed was is just the uh, JFK's nothing bad ever happens to the Kennedys and he gets into his car crash. <laughs> <laughs> And now it's just They're... everything. I'm seeing JFK cosplayers that are padding their ass and they're like putting like giant cones just to get the perfect shape. I told I told my manager that he has to uh, be JFK for Halloween. I, I like I was like, hey, I was like, this would be perfect for you. It would be hilarious. Like, you know, I could be like Jane or something and, you know, you could just rip on me the whole time. You could rip on me the whole time and I would be like, you know, sad goth girl whatever it'd be hilarious um <laughs> but that episode the sleepy episode where um abe stays up too late trying to help um Clo uh, cleo with the um with the the pxjts or whatever they're called like the, the, the not sats the not sats there's this part where jane is, or sorry, Joan. Joan. Sorry, oh my gosh, I do this all the time. Two for uh, two. Joan, Joan is confessing. <laughs> her, her, Joan is confessing that she was like a not sleeper for a long time, and she's like, "Oh, I was so sleep deprived that I thought this was a good idea." And she lifts her pant leg, and she exposes a tattoo of a dolphin that's saying, "What's up?" And I was like, oh no, that's me. That's literally me because I have a tattoo on my ankle that no one gets to see and it might as well be a dolphin. And I have considered covering my tattoo that I have with Joan's tattoo as like, just like yes, an please do it. homage and like, you know, just as a, as a reminder of like, Megan, you did this. You have to live with it. No, I, I would love if you get the dolphin the, the dolphin tattoo, the exact <laughs> dolphin tattoo, and it has to be saying what's up. It would be, because I love it so much! <laughs> oh, I used to watch Clone High when get, I was young. Sorry, you what? Get, Kyle does not get to shake his head in disappointment over other people's tattoos, because someone's got Mrs. Potts tattooed on him. I still have no hey, regrets about any of them. Mrs. Potts <laughs> is the bomb, okay? Mrs. Potts is a bamf, okay? You she don't is even a strong, know. independent mother. I was also she a really ball. is. Yes. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so b because you guys get got to grow up, basically, like, with Clone High, it was on Cartoon Network? By TV? No, it was not. It was, for us, it was on Teletoon. 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 Teletoon at night. Okay, yeah. Teletoon at night, right. I didn't have that channel growing up, and I didn't have, like, you know, satellites, so I didn't get to be exposed to it. So I remember... My sister introduced me to Clone High. She was like, this episode is you because it had Seth Green in it. And I was like, bruh. <laughs> and like Tom? that. What? Tom, Tom Green. Green. Oh my god, why am I like this? I'm really bad at names. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> it's Sunday and the week's about to start over. <laughs> it had Tom Green in it. And like, we were like, this episode is me because that's like, uh, that's me. Hey, what's the skin on my arm? I'm an albatross. Like, and that defined my entire high school life. It's like Literally, lick the like, book, but you know, sniff the, book, the controller. The Touch the book, lick the book, lick the book. Um, sniff yeah, the Xbox so, controller. Like, 
literally when I was given a textbook, any time I was given a textbook in high school, like the first year that I went into it, because I had watched that episode, I would literally be touch the book, lick the book, lick the book, lick the book, lick the book, 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 book. And you want to hear literally... a funny story about a textbook? No one, no one knew yes. what I was talking about because we didn't have that channel. Well, Megan, that still happens to me because I, I constantly will randomly spit out the JFK line. I are a want a party platter. And everyone just stares at me with a blank face, not remembering the reference, but I don't care. And I keep doing it anyways. But 300 episodes of you referencing the show. Oh, absolutely. And that my it, it's delighted my heart now that all of these little things that I have like loved about this show are now popping up within it. So, um, what, one of the times I met like one of my brothers in high school, uh, Mr. Kyle Jacome. Uh, Jacob. For some reason, I wanted to test how strong he actually was. So I held up a textbook oh, no. in front of my face and told him to punch it as hard as possible to see if he could break it. The textbook? Ooh. How yeah. do you even break a textbook? That's like trying to break you a phone don't. book just using your fist. Let me you... tell you, the textbook did not break, but my nose sure did. <laughs> <laughs> like, actually, you broke your nose? Uh, it cracked, like, part of my nose up here and, like, bloodshot <gasps> across the desk and everything. The teacher's like, what happened? And I was like, oh, I sneezed. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, actual, like, anime nosebleed style? Like, like, like several times in high school, like, nose, my nose just bled out across the desk and then people would be like, what happened? And I'm like, eh. <laughs> Pretty much okay, summary so... of Kyle's medical history. What happened? Meh. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> so when I, when I, when I start writing and drawing our manga... Kyle's the nosebleeder? Yes. But not I for the it, usual <laughs> reasons. I had it cauterized. It doesn't do that anymore. Are you serious? What? Mm -hmm. So they like... Uh, the writing, welding they, 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 they burn like the inside of your nose. It smells horrendous, by the way. And uh, oh. they like seal it shut so you don't like rich randomly bleed anymore. Are you sure you just didn't get a lobotomy? No, that's in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's what they were doing. It's not a lobotomy, it's I a really... lobotomy. <laughs> lobotomy. I really hope that, because I know that we're supposed to be getting a Clone High Season 2, but I know yeah. that it was, like, cancelled or something, and it was, like, kind of iffy as if it was coming. I don't know what's going on with that, but I heard a lot of the reason, I heard rumors that the reason why Clone High was cancelled was because of Gandhi, question mark? Yes. Yeah. No, that, yeah, it was does that because have of weight Gandhi. to it? Does that? Oh, it has the weight to it there. So yeah, no, no, that is one hundred percent the reason. The reason MTV canceled it. It, it was going to get a season two. Uh, it did well enough for a season two. What yeah. happened was is uh, they started advertising MTV in India, and the depiction of Gandhi was deeply offensive to them. So MTV instead of but... had a plan. No, the the writers did have a plan to change Gandhi to retcon his character in a way that would make sense with the story. And it's going to be interesting to see if they do this. Uh, yeah. they're, they're gonna, it was going to turn out that he wasn't actually Gandhi. He turned out to be Gary Coleman the entire time. <laughs> see, but here's the thing. Like, I, so he would go I love, from Gandhi love, to Gary. Yeah, I love Gandhi in like, Clone High. I think he's a great character. And there's, there's nothing really... I would say per se like bad about him like he's not like a terrible person or anything he's just a hyper kid like you know uh, I don't know it, it, Which it, I it's can, one I, of those no it's one of yeah. those things where um it, he has significance to a certain people so yes, they I agree it, it's going to come down to a difference of perspective where we will parody a lot of our historical figures yeah Okay, that makes more sense to me. I mean, it makes me sad, but, like, him being Gary Coleman, I guess, makes a lot more sense, too. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, like, Clone he's of just, Coleman, or did Gary Coleman... Short. They just sneak into high school. I mean, they didn't explain it beyond that. It's just they did... Uh, they, there is an interview that's out there where they explained what their idea was to change things. However, with them being locked in the freezer, they can do quite a bit to continue the season two. Because in this case, because they're in the freezer, they can just pop back out in 2020. And it's like, oh, it turns <gasps> out you all failed. You must repeat the year. <laughs> <laughs> and then they do all know. of the same episodes again. 
Um, oh, imagine all these these poor kids in 2020. Like they're gonna have like all these Zoomer kids now that like compete with, and they have like so much swag and like style and stuff, and like totally different humor. It's gonna be so wild. I'm just imagine JFK as a TikToker. Yes, uh, he no, will. Check, Rob, that, that's check what I've been seeing. There are several JFK TikTokers now that have been popping across my feed. JFK would totally fit in with nowadays kids anyways, because he's like, you know, the gym junkie, and he's like a party kid, like, he's gonna fit in super easy. And then Joan is gonna be like, you know, she's she's already like this cool, like, e-girl already, like, she's like a goth girl, whatever, and everyone would idolize her for her style choices and how she acts and stuff, because, and she would like get like millions of followers because of it, but then Joan herself would be like, ugh, like, I don't want that. She'd Cleopatra like, starts in OnlyFans. Literally, Cleopatra would be like the influencer. I guess, yeah, because they are going to update to being new teens. Ooh, that's going to be interesting to see. I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping it works. However, not much that uh, Chris and Phil have done hasn't worked so far. Yeah, that's that's real true. Good. Now, we do have a fun event happening on uh, Thursday. Kyle, Chris, do you guys want to talk about that a little bit? Kyle <laughs> actually has nothing to do with it. This is my own plan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we're doing a... I'm doing a 12-hour birthday stream on twitch.tv slash Chris the Tripod. Yay, Christmas! Yay. Yay. Happy, birthday, birthday, happy birthday. Christmas! It's happy, happy Christmas! It's Christmas! Christmas. It's Christmas! It's happy Christmas! Is that Can I bring you cake? Can you like yeah. eat cake and stuff and like can we give you like a party no. hat? No. We're just gonna oh, interrupt no. your stream and be like, birthday boy! If I I'll showed up hands. at your house, <laughs> if I showed up at your house, your parents would totally let me in. <laughs> That's the worst part. My dad would let everybody in. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, uh, I'm getting like a little mania going. Please li continue, Chris. Li little, little she says. Everyone does note that she said little mania as opposed well, yeah, only, to well she's only 5 feet tall so it's it. mania <laughs> Mega's doing oh, WrestleMania 520 I mean speaking of mania uh Kyle I I understand that you know when you decide to buy a game you go and check the reviews first and you make sure it's no, a no, good no. Solid game. You or, even play the beta first, and it's like, hey, you know, let's see, check it out, hey. see if I like this. Hey, Kyle, Kyle, how's Avengers going? <laughs> how was we it didn't going? Get the details about Chris's stream because I. No, I'm it's fine. Insane. I want to hear about Avengers. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> okay. Well, so the new Square Enix Avengers game came out uh, a little while ago. And, um, put that right in your face. So, it, it's your traditional Destiny-looking RPG, where you, you do the missions, you get the gear, you level up the gear, but... You get the gear? Yeah, oh yeah. There's, Is there, like, like, a gear score? Yep. There's a power this... level that you have. Oh, it's like Destiny. Oh, it is pretty much Destiny. Uh, Except Destiny uh, was better. De wow. Destiny was better. Um, so the story is all right. Somebody pointed out a couple things that don't make sense. Like at one point, Tony risks his entire life and career to go to a space satellite when, in fact, Thor is two feet away and likes to fly through space consistently. But, you know, never use him. It's fine. So... Anyways, the whole thing of this is the Terrigen gas that, you know, makes the Inhumans. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is, was like the reactor was exploded and it caused hundreds of Inhumans to uh, like show up. Oh, they went with the Inhuman storyline. It's called A-Day. Okay. So Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. kind of did something, and I think there's something similar in the comics where it was their big plan to try to out-mutant the mutants. Yeah, they 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 tried. I do like in humans. Is that just me or? Uh, the only we see about <laughs> two to three in humans throughout this whole game that actively do something. Kamala. Yeah, there's Kamala. Okay. 
Uh, Where and the fact that she's an inhuman is an aside. Like her being inhuman, it feels like the least important part of her story. Where it's just that's just the explanation for her powers, rather than her being tied more to like inhuman centric stories. She uh, she doesn't really do anything with the inhumans either. Yeah, she's more of the Avengers fangirl that makes it so everybody comes back together. If she came out in the '90s, they would have made her a mutant. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. So, there, there's her, there's Theo, which is a guy that makes portals. Which makes it so you could, like, gather in... He, he res, you rescue inhumans and stuff like that out in the field. And he'll show up and just portal them away. I'm like, why couldn't you just do that in the first place? So it's like Metal Gear Solid V. You just find people out in the wild and you just, like, biovac them out. Yeah, yeah legitimately you just... Theo shows up, opens a portal, and you leave. <laughs> and they're, like, they're like, congratulations on rescuing someone. And I'm like, what do I get for it? And they're like, nothing. High five. Nothing. Right? And they walk away. That's stupid. You should get experience points and stuff at least. Like, come on. Well, I'll get there in a minute. So uh... <laughs> there's, there's a third one that has no relevance to anything, and his name's Dante. He sets things on fire? Dante sets things on fire. I didn't even know the like, character or the game, and I guess that power. Like Dante's okay, like Devil that May Cry? A good game. I was thinking Dante's Inferno. Yeah, I think he literally, his name is Inferno. He literally just throws fireballs with a broken leg and then like hobbles off somewhere, and they're like, never, they never see him again. Okay. So I'm like, oh, okay. Cool. So... That's great and all, and your their big bad is Modoc with the aim facility. See, Modoc doesn't really seem like that, like intimidating to me. I don't know. I I just don't really know how I feel about Modoc. Floating head. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he is. You have to watch him transform from a skinny, piddly little doctor to like a bur- like weird brainiac dude. Bur- <laughs> I have seen specials where they defeat Modok by disabling his chair and pushing him on his side. Oh, I you see. That, I I see that you've yeah, discovered the final boss the fight. The final boss fight is in fact punching the bottom of Modok's chair and pushing him over. So so then he just stops is doing. Is that literally things. the boss fight? Yeah, it's a quick time event, by the way. So you don't actually do anything. And from what you told me, it's all the same button. Yeah, it's just square like four (laughs) times in a row. I'm sorry. Okay, do you like have to like beat him up and like dodge him and stuff up until this point? Like, is this like the the final blow? You could dodge it if you want, but his abilities didn't do anything (laughs) damage-wise. I I got hit by a giant rotating blade and I took zero damage, so I was like, okay. Well... I guess I... I'll just punch his chair more. Um, so so the leveling system here. By the the end of the game, my Black Widow, Iron Man, and Kamala were all level one. <laughs> my my. So you just didn't use them at all? Never. So I, actually, <laughs> Iron Man was on the team that I constantly used. I just never played him, so he never actually gained experience. Um. He was just there for moral support. <laughs> uh, beyond that, I think Captain America was like nine. Thor was seventeen or eighteen, and like Hulk was twenty something. <laughs> As he should be. By the way, that made, matched. It made no difference. Not not a single difference. There there is no reason to have strategy within the game. You could just. My Hulk's power level was like sixty something. And he'd still be one shot by I don't know the wind. <laughs> I was just, I'd be running along and they'd be like, "Hey, danger!" And I'd be like, "From what?" And then they're like, "Well, your character's dead." I don't know. Yeah, so. Out. And I was like, "Okay, cool, neato burrito." Anyways, um, so yeah, the, you you take your four of you out, and you, you do missions, and it's the same mission over and over again, essentially. Where it's either hold the three spots until Jarvis hacks the system, 
beat up a, an elite team of the same units every time. And what was the last one that you usually had to do? I don't know. You always talk about there just being three missions. Yeah, it's like the same three scenarios over and over again, even in oh. storyline missions. What? So it was like, yeah, it, there's... It's repetitive? There's no variation in gameplay. <laughs> there's no... There's no anything. Um, yeah. I, it... See, that doesn't it, sound bad. desirable. Like, that doesn't sound like something that you would want to continue no, playing. It, it's bad. So, Kyle, I want you to explain to me and everyone out there. You read the reviews. You heard the warnings. I played the beta. So why'd you do it? <laughs> I played the beta. <laughs> when, when you have faith in a company, it's a wild thing. So, like, I've played through a lot of Blizzard things. Wait, this is a Blizzard game? No, this is Square Enix. Uh, so I've played through a lot of Blizzard games. And you know what? Company still sucks. But I've put faith in them. I had the same thing for Square Enix, because Square Enix makes a lot of good games. Final Fantasy. Yeah. Up until 12. Yeah. Like, and then 17 yeah. plus? Uh, 15 was all right. It had so, fishing. Uh, it had fishing. Yeah. That's what makes a game good. You like your fishing. So, uh, um, yeah, so I had I had the faith in the company, and I was like, you know what, they'll, they'll be fine. They'll do it. And I was sorely mistaken. It got worse. Somehow. I, I have no idea How what happened. How did it make it worse? Because uh, they were like, we're going to... There's supposed to be DLC characters coming out, like ten of them. And you got I mean, I have no idea what they're for. Yeah, I have no idea what they're they're for, because like your end get your post game is just doing the same missions you were doing in the regular game. That weren't fun. That weren't <laughs> fun. So like, I have I have no ideas. Okay, so here's the thing. Like, I was, like, looking at it from, like, my standpoint. I was like, wow, are you telling me that there's a company out there that's trying to, like, kind of, like, get in on the Take money, the cash mm -hmm. flow? Mm -hmm. Sorry? I mean, like, they said they were fixing things, and then they didn't. <laughs> and I was like, you're telling me that this game is bad. Meanwhile, they're just trying to, like, basically, like, cash in on, like, this big cash cow that's going around right now with how like you know big marvel is and i'm like oh so you're telling me that it was bad like wow they had no reason for it to be like the just absolute horse pile that it was because like they did you could tell they actively fix things from the beta like in the beta you'd punch things as the hulk and they'd like just fall where they are and now when you play it in regular you punch things they go flying across the continent into the wall and smack down and i'm like that's what I wanted. What wanted yeah. uncomfortable truth? Most superhero games suck. Yeah, yeah. It was okay. By Batman and Spider Man. But most superhero games, even newer ones, tend to be treated like licensed property games still. And well, I don't, no, hold on. Marvel Ultimate Alliance was a great game one and two. I haven't played the newer one. Mm -hmm. But those you are have... fighting games, and they're made by a good company. They're, 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 they're made by. Fighting. They're, they're not. Combat. They're not fighting games, first off. Wait, which one? Sorry, which one? Ultimate Alliance is not a fighting game. Oh, my so I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, I no, you're thinking like Marvel misunderstood. Capcom. Yeah, sorry. Like Marvel vs. Capcom, of... fighting game, great game still. I was thinking Injustice. of Injustice, my bad. Injustice? Yeah, I was thinking no, of Injustice. Don't, don't include fighting games, because that's just making a good fighting game or not, and swapping the characters with them. Yeah, the, 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 the fighting game mechanics are generally the same across the board. Injustice was a good one, had a great story to it. Fractured um, butthole. It's superheroes. So, yes. what was the other that one that I was thinking of? I can't remember. I lost my train of thought for that. Spider-Man PS2 was... is pretty fun. So, uh, that's what I said. Batman and Spider-Man are kind of the exception where there are sig there are more good games with those characters than bad ones. But for most superheroes, 
most game releases they've had have been kind of terrible. A lot of them have been also because they've been movie tie-ins only, and that played a part in it. But a lot of people didn't like the Watchmen game, but I thought it was like Watchmen game. Yeah, the Watchmen game. It was top down. Uh, or, uh, no, was no, it? no, it was that was a beat 'em up. It was it was kind of like the the Warriors, where yeah, no, I played I actually played the Watchmen game. It was a prequel was to there, the movie. Was there two? Mm -hmm. It wasn't terrible, but people were like, oh, it was terrible. <laughs> it was short. That that was yes. the biggest problem for me. Is it was very short, uh, and like I I was done it within like I think two hours. It was incredibly short. And that was my biggest problem with it. When it came to fighting mechanics, I actually really like beat 'em ups. So, nah, it was it was fine. It, I wasn't expecting too much, but it wasn't overly interesting as a story, and it was incredibly short for what you paid for. The Lego Marvel games, yeah, the Lego Marvel games. Lego games Lego, don't count. Lego you games are always great. Yeah, because yes. that is a Lego game before it's a superhero game. Like it's it's like with fighting games. Like I I say f like fighting games don't count because if you make a bad fighting game, it doesn't matter which characters you have. You just made a bad fighting game. Yeah. If you make a good fighting game, you can one, put any characters in there. Minority on this one, DC Universe Online. I liked it. What even is that? It's the MMO that DC Universe released that was free to play. You can make your own custom superhero with various superhero powers. I remember oh, that. I started, but it wasn't free to play. Um, oh, you and I played I, that for a while. I did. I had the Green Lantern abilities, of course. Oh, gosh. I was a speedster. It was actually not bad. I oh, think okay. That's I think actually high, high That is high praise from the WoW addict. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I played an okay. MMO that wasn't WoW. Wasn't bad. <laughs> I have played probably almost every MMO that has ever come out, like Final Fantasy, AR, and everything like that. So, I, yeah, DC Universe Online wasn't bad. They had a nice, like, couple updates. I think it's still getting updated. Arkham Knight was pretty bad. Well, the Arkham series has Arkham its series is kind of the gold st Really? I mean, yeah. there's some entries that are flawed, but, like, the first two? I was going to say, first... Arkham Asylum is probably your, like, peak it's a... for a superhero game. Like, Arkham Asylum feel, feels like a near-perfect game. Arkham? Minus Spider-Man for PS4 and Xbox One, that's probably, like, the the top tier. Yeah, it, it, set a new, game. it set a new standard. Up until that point, yeah, it would be uh, Batman. I Arkham adored series. Arkham City still. I, I had my Arkham issues. Arkham City was good. I had my issues with the, the next two. Uh, I can't remember the short one they did that was done by a different studio. Arkham Origins. Origins. origins yeah origins was... it was all it wasn't good but it wasn't bad it was it was still better than most superhero games i will say but it wasn't great I, I preferred origins over arkham knight for the sole reason of there's no big mystery in origins you know it's the joker it's always going to be the joker yeah but arkham what... knight the mystery didn't work if you were a hardcore enough fan too which you didn't even have to be a hardcore fan like if you, you were a casual two two fan of dc it was very obvious and them plotting so much around, especially with uh, Arkham City, a lot of the twists I didn't see coming. Yeah. Because that was the, the only flaw I really had with the uh, Arkham Asylum that most people have is uh, ju jacked up Joker is just kind of stupid, but it's like, all right, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this like the Bane Joker? Yeah, yeah, where he gets all... Yeah, he takes the, the serum and gets all super buff at the end titan or whatever it was called <laughs> i don't yeah, know how titan. i feel about that but like the story in city i kind of liked the uh sort of duality if i die you die sort of shenanigans i like i the only reason i don't like arkham knight as much is not even because of the batmobile it's once you learn the big twist you lose all replayability in the game because it's all trying to hype up this twist yeah uh, asylum city even origins there's no real twist to worry about. You can go back in and replay those games, and it's not like you're trying to figure out a mystery. Yeah. You know what? Yes, Miss Robot? One more time? <laughs> Repeat, Megan? Nope. Nope, we don't, we don't hear you, Megan. Megan EXE oh. has stopped working. I was going to say there was a... Oh, she's still talking. Okay, that's... <laughs> 
There was a Batman Telltale game. I can't remember. Was that robotic what... again? A little yeah, bit. Just, gone. Say, just say it again, and I'll fix it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have never played any superhero games. Sorry, I just never did. You have a PS4, right? I do. Do you want to borrow the Arkham Collection and Spider-Man? I... Sure. There you Sp go. Spider-Man's probably your, your best go. Yep. <laughs> but I just... I, I've never picked them up at all, like, surprisingly. Well, like I said, um, most most superhero games, if you look at like, the entire pantheon of them, are rather uh, movie tie ins. So most things from like the, the 3D era have been movie tie ins of some sort, rarely just tying back to the comics itself. And then, like, was... pre that, a lot of them were just <clears throat> beat em up platformers. Uh, yeah. Rob made a good point. Was there a, game, was there a game where you got to play as Moon Knight? That's Maybe sick, in Ultimate he, Alliance. He was in Ultimate Alliance, and uh, the one that I loved and we talked about last week with uh, Project Supervillain yeah. was was uh, Marvel Heroes, the Diablo-like clone where you got to play those things and like collect gear and level up and do all that like, top-down one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, that was, I'm just... That was... Yeah. I'm just wondering, because I would like to play as Moon Knight. I would love to play like a full-length game with as no, I, as you're, you're, you're never gonna get one. one. Did you yeah, mean yeah. Batman? Yeah. I'm crying. You're you're I'm never crying. gonna get one for Moon Knights. But uh, Rob, <laughs> Rob brought up a good idea, a good one. The Telltale Batman game. Yeah. Well, the thing is, with that one again, it's that's a Telltale game. It's rather Telltale made a good game or not, regardless of what property they've gotten, because they have made ones with properties where it's like, ah, it was all right. Like the Game of Thrones one was. Or Guardians of the Galaxy. Or Guardians Guardian, of the Galaxy. The Guardian of the Galaxy one was a hard man. <laughs> huh. Huh. What? DCUO is still, in fact, getting up updated. They got updated in June with Wonderverse, and it's all Wonder Woman-related things. Nice. That's a wonder. Oh, I, I guess they thought the movie was coming out. <laughs> Oop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, including a massive uh, open world universe merging Themyscira. Hey, cool. Yep, yep. I mean, well, that's what happened with a lot. I, I mentioned this before, where Wonder Woman appeared on all the Dorito bags, and I'm like, oh, whoops, they didn't change the advertising in the marketing campaigns because the all the movies got delayed. Oopsie, so we're gonna poopsie. keep getting branded content for movies that aren't released yet. Oh yeah, and oh, won't be yeah. released for months. Oh, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I could think of for like superhero related games. I am kind of glad that that Spider Man Miles Morales is coming out for PS4 too. It looks pretty oh, good. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited about that. I really like the sort of intro that they've set up here. It's in the same universe as the other one, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so it like they they kind of set it up in the trailer where he you know he's moved neighborhoods now and he's starting to get into his own role as Spider Man. Um, it's going to be interesting to see the direction they take it in, though. Especially since he's got oh, no. different oh, powers. Yeah. So I'm looking up a list right now on IMDb of the most popular superhero video games. Right? Uh oh. Okay. Uh -huh. just, just to go through. Uh, first off, Saints Row Four is on there. That's not you know, right. You are, you are technically a superhero in Saints Row 4. Yeah, you have superpowers and everything. However... Okay, you can have superpowers, but no, that's shenanigans. That's being a, that's being a video game hero that is a different category. Totally Here, different. No, like, I could here's say, a strong I word. That, you know, Jesse Faden from Control is like a superhero, but she's not... Devil May Cry is a superhero Devil May Cry game. is a superhero <laughs> game. Yeah, like, they're all superhero games if you think about it. Like, Final any Fantasy Army's, is a superhero game. No. Army of Two... Yeah. Is like you're basically the Punisher. Like, no, get out of my face. Number nineteen. Halo is a superhero game. No, if if we. No, Andrew, you I... gotta hear about number, number nineteen is... is Tony Hawk's okay. Pro Skater Two. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you can skateboard as Spider Man does not make it a superhero game. Oh, uh, but Officer Tony Dick. Hawk. Officer Dick's in there. Uh... Yeah. Okay, but uh, the. the... Those are just regular heroes, not superheroes. That's, that's... Okay. So, Adventure 2 is on here. 
If I made that... a video game today, if I made a video game, I would bring back the Durst cameo. Like, I would bring back the Fred Durst cameo because he was in so many games in, like, that era of, like, 2000s, like, early 2000s games. I would bring it back. Like, we we need another game where there's a Fred Durst cameo. <laughs> There's Nobody one. likes Fred Durst anymore. <laughs> the, la the last one on the list is one that Chris used to play. Oh. Which one? Let me guess. It's going to be a not another superhero game. No, it's actually a superhero game. Oh, this one's actually a superhero game. It's for mobile. Yeah, how's your Marvel Heroes Academy treating you, buddy? Oh, mother oh. <gasps> Yeah, so that's the one that you built your own little school with teenage versions of the superheroes as they like <laughs> hung out in school life. <laughs> Creepy. Yeah. <laughs> it shut down. Andrew, you, you know how much money it? I put into that? Oh yeah, no. too much. Too he much. Put, he put money into that. Yikes. Yeah, that was a big yikes. Um No. I didn't say yikes. I said yike. <laughs> uh, also just one, yike. one whole yike. That one was a little rough. Yeah. I honestly don't... Oh, hey, Spongebob. Um... <laughs> no. No. Hey, Battle for Bikini Bottom is one of the best superhero games that has ever come out. F is if for you... friends, Andrew, that do stuff together. You oh, yeah, no, I, that... Yum, bomb. That's... Let's and do this for no survivors. And you're having fun. Okay, I have a question for you guys. About, if you um, could, if you could make a any superhero game, what would you pick? They already Marvel made heroes. it. Marvel heroes. <laughs> <laughs> what? I want Marvel heroes to come back. That's what I want. <laughs> Why? It's Diablo with superheroes. <laughs> Real quick, while we're still on superheroes, did you guys call Tony Stark's number? No. No. I've no. never called a number that's ever been posted on anything. Yeah, in the Kratos one? one? Never. In one of the comics, uh, Thor publicly releases Tony Stark's phone number, and it's an actual phone number you can call, not a 555 number. And you get Tony Stark's voicemail where he's like, yeah, I had to toss his phone because some blonde jerk let my number out. <laughs> I, I wasn't doing anything else to, that day, so it's like, I'm going to call Tony Stark. Well, I, I do have unlimited calling to the United States. <laughs> <laughs> it was a New York number, so it makes sense. What happened? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You get his voicemail, and he's like, yeah, it People is Tony Stark. Voicemail? No, he apparently tossed the phone because he got too many voicemails. <laughs> However, how cool would it be if you were like caller number one, and it's just like, the guy who does the voice for Tony Stark in the video game, just like, hello, Tony Stark here. Oh, gosh. <laughs> nope. Is Fortnite no. a superhero game right now? Yeah, it's part no. of the Marvel Universe. It is canonly <laughs> part of the It is canonly part. part of the Marvel Universe, sorry to tell you, yep. but Fortnite is... <laughs> Canon. A superhero, superhero game. game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know that song? <laughs> This feels uh, like a conspiracy fan. from the superhero game makers to try to revive the fan reputation of superhero games yeah. to by making everything a superhero game. Because that means super that means Mario's a superhero. Yes, he's jump man. He has a cape. Thanos he... truck do 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 Thanos truck do 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 <laughs> in like one of the previous updates you used to actually be able to play as Thanos and like you were the main guy on the team, and your rest of your team had to run around and like collect infinity stones for you, and you got stronger as it went along. And oh. the other t other team had to try to kill you. I wish we played that <laughs> mode when it was existing. I wish we played Fortnite yeah. when that was existing. Oh. One of okay. my favorite things about Fortnite is you can play as a banana. You can Peely. play as a banana. Peely. He's like the best, yeah! man. He's, he's Peely. <sighs> he's Peely. He's a, he's a canon character. He has Wolverine claws. Yes, and they're bananas. Yeah. You want to like? <laughs> My favorite thing about Fortnite is is just another battle pass for Kyle, out of his like eight. <laughs> <laughs> I 
favorite thing about Fortnite is that a coworker does the floss when it's horribly inappropriate. Which version? There's like four. <laughs> there's the, the standard. What? Well, there's, yeah, there's like the the one this the regular one. The and windmill. There's the, world, the windmill one. There's one handed one, and then there's a no handed one. Isn't just that gyrating your head? Is that just wiggling? No, it's the no handed floss. <laughs> Fortnite had to capitalize on it. Wow. Oh, no handed floss. Fortnite's Backpack a great game. Boy is gonna be so mad that Let's he's not getting all that money. I told you to stop drinking the Kool Aid, Kyle. Never. He's the leader of the cult. He has to drink the Kool Aid. So I'm Rob, sorry that Kool Aid. I'm sorry Rob, that about... Avengers was terrible. Kyle. No, I yeah, was a long way, way, Kyle. I mean, I warned myself. And when we told, and when we when when he said we bought it, and we we're just like, Kyle. You're part Kyle. of the problem here. I was you there when he did it. Game. I didn't stop him. <laughs> it was going to be bad. Y yeah. Oh, I knew. And supporting it at all was going to support its money grubbing. Because the problem is, is that if this game is financially successful, even if it's crap, uh, they're going to make more. And more companies are going to try to imitate it. Namely, Activision. Oh, it, ends it ends open-ended so they can like set up for a sequel. Ah. Uh. See, okay, this is the problem with games right now. Is like, okay, touch that. there was, there was, um, like you know, the Destiny formula, kind of like with like you know the gear score kind of thing, and then they had like um, the Ghost Recon Wildlands, which was fantastic. Don't get me wrong, I loved World Ghost Recon Wildlands. Then they made Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and Breakpoint was so broken, and it was just such garbage that they actually had to like do like this long-winded apology to their fans. When you like did this one update and stuff, and then they finally kind of fixed it. Like it's worth like twenty dollars. Like that's 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 the maximum amount that you should pay for this game. And um, there are more games coming out like this every single season, and they're just terrible. They do you are remember Anthem? Absolute garbage. Yes. Megan. It's one dollars and twenty four cents right now. <laughs> Isn't the uh, paying full price for Anthem? Isn't Breakpoint like the one with uh, the Punisher? Yes, and it's yeah. terrible. You yeah. should not support it. Literally, okay, when they presented this game at the Game Awards or whatever it was, everyone lost their mind, not because the Punisher was on stage, but because of the dog that they brought in. The dog was like the highlight of their presentation <laughs> because it could do be. tricks, and it was like, like obedient. And it was like, wow, oh my goodness, like amazing. Can you have a dog and like use it like to this extent in the game? No. You can shoot it. Oh, if, can it play fetch? I don't know. I don't even remember if there are dogs in this game. <laughs> I mean, it's like if, a common feature. If Blacklist has one, has a, has a bunch of dogs in it, I would assume that Wildlands and Breakpoint, both in the jungles, probably have dogs. Can you play fetch, though? No. Uh, if by fetch you mean can you shoot bullets at them and they'll catch it, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that, that counts. <laughs> Speaking of like, dogs. The thing is. That's the thing I'm like, I just don't want to see more games like this because like it makes it so that you, if you go up against like a, a harder enemy, like you can't do any damage to them because your gear score is too low. So if you don't have the right equipment or anything, there's like, there's no way, there's no way of feeling accomplished if you go up against a, a, a tougher enemy because you can't even defeat them. There's no point. Like they're saying, no, you just can't. You have to go, you can pay you have money to go to like. No loot. No, you have to go loot and shoot and like go up against like you have. They're forcing you to grind and they're forcing yeah. you to find, you know, these skins and these like stupid like little textures. You know what Kyle that likes you doing? Put on grinding. Yeah, that's his favorite. Dancing and singing in the middle Ladies. of Walmart. I do, I do that too. But yeah, gri grinding in games means the company gets more playtime out of it. Yeah, I just ugh. And then they restrict some of these, like, you know, these camouflages and stuff if you really want them. They're like, oh, well, you can only get it in this specific game mode. And if you don't have four friends that you can rely on and play with, then guess what? You're never getting that camouflage. Like, you're never getting that one item that you want kind of thing. Like, it's just, uh, uh. So what you can do is go to the Reddits and find the pickup groups that are always there, like I've had to do for several games. And you go, hey, I need other people to help me do this raid. And they're like, all right. All right, dog. 
That's how I found my last. Yeah, that's how I found my last wild game because I was like, "Listen, I got to do the content. I really don't want to do the content because everybody sucks." And they're like, "We kind of suck, but we're funny." And I was like, "All right, I'm in." Okay. (laughs) That's the thing. Like, that's a good community for like a game and stuff. But like at the same time, should a game really, really, really rely on its community for its gameplay? Some ancient alien researchers say yes. I'm so proud of you. I am so proud. I'm definitely coming over Thursday now. I'll hurt you. <laughs> and I'll enjoy it because I'll hurt you more He's got a sword. emotionally He's got a sword than you could ever hurt me physically. There's like Look at this big sword. Right right there. Yeah, and you know what I'm not afraid of? Sharp pointy things. You know how many times I've stabbed I don't myself? I think it's sharp, which is probably the worst part. It's a blunt it's instrument. Mine, it's not sharp. No, if it's, it's mine, rebellion. If it's the one that I gave you. Okay. No, it's rebellion. We'll just use we we'll use the one that I gave you on Rob because it'll cause more damage and trauma. Rebellion's pretty thick. I yeah, like it. it thick. Is. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's a pretty thick sword. And I can't wait for Chris to take his long, thick, hard metal sword and just stick it in me. Damn sword, that's a thick sword. Damn. Remember when you got kicked in the head at Kitticon? <laughs> <laughs> Good time. Uh, Rob, what have you been up to? I have been up to Star Trek Lower Decks, the sixth or seventh Star Trek series. Oh, don't make me okay. count. I don't know. I already or... stated that I don't really care about Star Trek. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, we're going to talk about Star Trek. I I am out. Boop. Now, hold well, on. This is a pretty good weekend for Star Trek later in life, mostly through reruns at noon on Spike. <laughs> <laughs> this is a different take on Star Trek, completely. Oh, it this, is. First off, it's animated. Yes. Oh, and, and it's a comedy of, series. Yeah, it is based on the people who work at the lower decks of, star, of a starship and the shenanigans they get up to. So I, I conceptually, oh. I'd like the show just because you see all of this crazy stuff happen in any of the Star Trek series where there are every other week, there is this wild, spectacular thing happening or something in the ship goes awry. But yeah. there's also hundreds of other people working on that ship. See, okay, I've never, I have never thought of that of the Star Trek series. I thought it was just like a little like tiny like skeleton crew of people running this giant ship. No, you just saw like... the important ones. <laughs> we, we, they often like mention like, yeah, there's a few hundred of crew members. Yeah, what? you'll hear they'll throw like death numbers, uh, like or there's damage between like decks two to seven, and we've lost fifteen, you know, people, and it's. I, you'd see death more, I think, in the original Star Trek with red shirts dying all the time. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's you still get references huh. about just fatalities and also what I do like about this show is though it it doesn't really focus on the bridge. You know who those characters? You, well, you know who the first officer and the captain are, but most of the upper la- level of management doesn't matter. We're only focusing on ensigns, so your entry level lowest rank on the ship one dot sort of people and you're seeing all of the crazy stuff that happens up there is also happening to them. Yeah. So our our show follows four characters. Ensign Boimler, Mariner, Boimler, <laughs> Tendi, and Rutherford. Uh, first two are just standard Starfleet humans. Uh, Boimler is that dude who's way, way, way too into Starfleet and, like, following the rules, and he wants to make a grand career of himself. Yeah, he's uh, kind of your straight-laced, uh, he's a nerd, stuck up, suck up. Uh, but then we get the awesome Baff that is Mariner, who can be a captain, but just doesn't want to be. She just has more fun doing the low-tier stuff. I feel that. Mariner is probably the most interesting character on the show thus far, just because she has sort of a character arc. They didn't reveal it at first, because she's super, super capable, but she's always, you know, ensign level, and she's trying to goof off, and she wants to go space exploring, but not really do the the standard Starfleet work. The 
in one of the later episodes, you actually find out the captain is her mom, and that's why she's on the ship. It's essentially her last sort of chance situation. Still, uh, with Ensign Tendi, I don't remember what alien race she is, but I think she's one of the green slave girls that wound up hooking up with Captain Kirk. I don't know. They, they, there probably is a deeper <laughs> reference there. I enjoy her character. She's just the fun, spunky science one. I like the dog she made. It's just a regular dog. Dog was hilarious. <laughs> um, so she genetically makes her own dog based on what she thinks a dog is. Hand banana? No, uh, way no. worse. No, no. You can't, it, you it, can't it, have worse than hand banana. He literally sexually assaults people on the daily. It's a, de it's a um, demon thing. With, well, with... I mean, it looks like a regular dog, at least when uh, Tendi's around. But... Every time she leaves or looks away, it transforms into, like, a horrific nightmare creature and freaks people out. But for her, she's like, oh, no, it's just a regular dog. Until we get to the end of the episode and the dog starts speaking to her. It's like, what, Tendi, you knew the dog could speak? It's like, yeah, what's wrong? All dogs can speak. It's like, no, they can't. Oh, I guess you are a freak. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. I didn't want to be rude. <laughs> then finally, we have Ruth Rutherford, who is a cyborg. Uh, he's the engineering he, he, he guy. Feels, he feels like a Vulcan stand-in to me, but with more emotions, because he's, like, half cyborg. <laughs> yeah, I like him because he's, like, weirdly OCD, and I'm sorry, I died laughing at the episode where he creates the holographic training program, Badgie, and yes. Badgie snaps and just starts wanting to kill them. It because is the we've had... Well, we've had so many episodes where the plot of the episode, especially in Voyager, where... Something went wrong with the holodeck again, and the ship's now in danger. This happened far too frequently, and you gotta figure, there's a holodeck on most of Starfleet ships, and everyone gets to use them. They've also made a reference with Mariner having to do all of the worst jobs of her having to clean out the gunk tank, where it's just a sloshy liquid. I genuinely appreciate the fact that when we see one of Mariner's programs, it's just a bunch of naked guys at a gym, and I'm like, yes! Finally, they acknowledge that people use this thing for sex. What, what the holodeck would have actually been... Because you're in Star... If you're on... Shore you're leave. Nowhere for it, it relieves the need for shore leave. Because that's why you had shore leave as a pirate and a sailor. Was to get on land for a bit. Yeah. And so <laughs> I genuinely appreciate the fact that they acknowledge... No, people use the holodeck for that. But the episode you were referencing, yeah, so he makes a training program just for uh, for educational purposes, and it, it's essentially a parody of Clippy. <laughs> but then it can't teach you, so it gets more mad at you and starts trying to kill you. <laughs> the way it's talking, it's like got the high-pitched cartoony voice, it's like, you're blind! <laughs> oh. I, I do love the the fact that the um, bridge crew are just the worst in oh, the yeah. best way. Oh yeah, um, I know it. The security officer they're at a stalemate with another ship, and he's just like in the background. Let me shoot him! No, come on! I want to shoot him. And also, like, you see the missions that they go on. So, you know, like, the Enterprise is this big, exciting ship that, you know, goes on noble and prestige missions, where I believe one of the first episodes for the, the series was Second Contact. It's after you've made first contact with the, you know, civilization, and you've, like, you know, done the whole ticker tape parade and introduced yourselves and welcomed them into, like, the wider galaxy and stuff, you have Second Contact, where you go back and you sign all the paperwork. That's what this ship does. I do appreciate those kind of jokes, yeah. And because it's animated, you're not limited by the Star Trek budget. You can go as crazy and kooky as you want, where Ensign Boimler winds up getting sucked on by a giant spider cow thing. Yes. <laughs> That's the great thing about animation, is you can get away with a lot more. And, like, you don't have to worry about the CGI budget. It was literally the first, like, five seconds of the show that sold me, uh, where Mariner comes in drunk and has a Klingon battlet, and she's like, oh, on her, oh, on her, and accidentally slices a chunk off Boimler's leg. <laughs> and to me, that's like, all right, 
You've sold me, show. Hey, let's let's see where you're going. That sounds that sounds like something I would do, except I would use the bat lift in the wrong way, in the wrong context. I would like lift it over my head, and I would be like, rrr, 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 like like a <laughs> like a Tuscan Raider. Like, <laughs> I don't think Star Wars exists in Star Trek. I mean, I mean you never know, uh, right? We went through Tommy Westfall before, Rob. It <gasps> turns out Star Wars is Star Trek. Anagis. Star Trek War Trek Trek. So, uh, the show is hilarious, and basically... A, for me, it, I wasn't sold on it at first. Like, I didn't hate it, where, like, I saw, like, the first two episodes, and I'm like, I'm like, it's it's not bad. Um, I wouldn't subscribe to CBS for it, but, like, it's it's pretty, like, it was a nice casual watch. Uh, as the episodes got, uh, got going and they got more comfortable with their characters, I got more into it and stuff where I, I like more conceptually what they're dealing with sometimes than all of the jokes they'll make. I did enjoy the idea of the captain trying to be so efficient, and I'm sure that each of you in your own yes. jobs have had different terms for this, but the buffer period between tasks where you overestimate how long something's going to take you to do it, so you get a little breather time, and then when you finish it early, you look good. Yeah, so the the captain uh, finds out there's all this wasted time in easy to do you know tasks, and then tries to pretty much eliminate all the inefficient time. So what ends up happening is everyone is so stressed and tired and is you know so bound by the rules that they are completely helpless to defend themselves from an invasion into their ship until the you know the captain says like okay it's off you can do whatever you want and you watch people get creative with star trek and that's a good point the, the way they solve every problem is some creative macguffin that someone pulls out of their butt going oh let's do this and this and uh bounce a neutron field off the main deflector dish the best part is the uh aliens that invade the ship are just sticks and spears yes <laughs> and even boiler points that's like they're like, we have spears. It's like, yeah, but I have a phaser. Pew. Boop. And I kind of just love that anticlimactic. That's like, the biggest dork is the one who takes down most of these because he's just like, I have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> gun solves everything. I see your stick and raise you gun. Pretty much, yeah. One of the plots I really liked as well was the sort of uh, murder mystery plot that they did where it's like, oh, we want to go to, like, the, the big celebration. There was a big party on the, uh, on what, for the lower decks for the ensigns, and uh, two of our main characters, Boimler and... Mariner. Mariner. They were pretty much, they were scheduled to work, but the, the third guy working with us was like, ah, oh, no, wor don't worry, I can deal with this on my own. You guys go off, you know, you guys go have fun. I'll just get this done. It's a solid for you guys. I got it. But when they come back, he's been knocked out and, like, something from the ship is stolen. So the and they go won't through, work. And so the shields won't work. And they're in a negotiation for trash that has been pretty much, like, it's just debris, star, uh, Starfleet debris that has been there for, I think, 100 years. And there's some, you know, pretty much scavengers just trying to think, no, we found this. This has been here forever. This is ours. We're going to take it. They're like, no, it's Starfleet property. We're going to take it. But if they fire on them, it starts a war. And it's the uh, military officer just like, come on, let me shoot him. Let's bomb him. I, I do like that he's so aggressively aggressive. And I think it's, they, they go through the whole whodunit thing, and it turns out, it's like, no, the guy just lied. He actually tried to hook up the ship's computer to his brain and made this cell sentient, and now it's just grabbing all of the other technology. And it, it looks like it's going to be this big catastrophe on the, uh, on the ship until they eject it. And it hits that other ship, dismantles it, and solves their problem, and ends up de promoting the guy that they, uh, you know, that had been messing around with them the whole day. And then he gets kicked out. And then he gets fired because he was incompetent. I also like the st uh, that story where they kind of had the similar thing where it was the uh, the doctor that was trying to get transferred to the Cerritos, not because uh. He was essentially trying to trick two of the ensigns. It was, uh... Tendi and Rutherford. Tendi and Rutherford. He was trying to trick them into, like, oh, if whoever completes this first will get a free tricord. He's like, oh, you both get it. You guys are going to both transfer to this ship here, and I'm going to go to the Cerritos. 
and he was trying to play it off like it's a big promotion for them but in reality he is just so sick and tired of dealing with exciting adventures he just wants to go to an easy ship just do some damn maintenance work and like sit back and relax because there's crazy <laughs> crap happening on a ship every other week like the enterprise does so i like that concept of being on a ship like the difference between being on a boring ship might be better than being on the exciting one where you have to deal with all this crazy stuff and damage and death all the time. I also weirdly like that in one of the episodes, the way they punish Mariner is to promote her. Just yeah. because I can I can relate to that kind of torture where it's like, I, I'm cool with like just riding the middle, comfortable there. I, I'm not a leader per se. So if you put me in those situations where I have to be in charge of people, I don't want it. <laughs> it's hard to be a leader. It's very, very hard to be a leader, and you know, someone who who pulls the reins and you know is is keeping everybody in check. Like, you know, uh, Andrew, your arms must be so swole from carrying the team. <laughs> oh, look at my muscle. <laughs> oh. oh, oh, ow! Uh, resident comedian. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I do but like Megan, the... how... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, oh. Andrew. No, you, oh, you, sorry. You, go you ahead. Go ahead, Rob. Go ahead before I, I was going to say. Yeah, if... if you do like Star Trek, you, uh, the way I described it to Kyle is: if you've ever seen Final Space, imagine Final Space does Star Trek. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that, that's something. Is, yeah, I think you need to be a Star Trek fan to enjoy this show. Like, yeah. I, I don't think the jokes work unless you enjoy the jokes about the intricacies of and the quirks about like the the rules they've set up within that universe if you're not a fan of star trek i don't think this show is going to work yeah. for you and here's the thing rob like i actually did not enjoy final space like i tried watching it and i saw exactly why you liked it i saw a lot of like rob drippings in it i was like yeah this is <laughs> rob yes. likes this show like this is a rob show 100 percent and I was like, and that's why I heard it! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, but, like, I saw, like, okay, for example, like, when I watch stuff and I'm like, hey, this is my humor, 100% to a T, like, Clone High and stuff, you know, like, mm -hmm. some episodes of uh, Powerpuff Girls where they, like, do, like, the super chill stuff and then everything is anarchy! Like, that's my humor. And then I tried to watch, like, um, like Final Space and it was just, like, too much. And I'm like, yeah, but I can see why Rob liked this. Like, this is something that Rob would like. Um, but I just didn't like it. But I will give this Star Trek show a try for sure because I did enjoy um uh Space card. Oh, no, no, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed Next Gen Star Trek. I used to watch it with yeah. Nana all the time. My Nana was a big like Star Trek Picard fan. Like, woo, big surprise. I, I think that's nerd. a series that uh yeah, it, it, if you're a fan of Next Gen, you, you'll probably get a lot of this stuff, because I definitely think they take a lot of their ideas from Next Gen episodes. Yeah. Especially, like, the Next Gen uniforms. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah, so, like, I'll definitely give it a shot, but I don't know if I'll be, like, be, like, 100% into it. I'll, I'll watch a couple episodes this week, and then I'll let you guys know again on Sunday, but, yeah, we'll see. But, Megan, what have you been up to this week? Um, uh, fishing. No, I'm just kidding. Fishing. <laughs> fishing. Drinking. Doing other things that I won't say on air. <laughs> um, no, I uh, I did have a little bit of a vacay, but what I was planning on talking about was uh, a game called Those Who Remain, and I'm not really like super excited about it. When I saw the trailer, I was like, "Wow, this looks really good! Like another spooky game that I can get into." Spooky. Um, spooky and uh, i actually was really disappointed with this like it might have actually played better on pc but it just didn't translate to console very well um you follow the story of edward turner who has to visit this um hotel or he's visiting this uh town called dormont um it turns out that this guy is like cheating on his wife or whatever so he goes to uh, this hotel in dormont which is basically not silent hill <laughs> his uh <laughs> he goes there to like meet his mistress or whatever and then stuff starts hitting the fan and like the the power goes out and all of these creatures are hidden in the darkness um i don't really like there's like a catalyst in dormant that happens um and edward has to like kind of like figure out the mystery so you 
play through this game and you're like finding uh, like articles and stuff about this girl who was. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Andrew. Well, what, what kind of like what is the gameplay like? What, what's the gameplay set up as? Oh, is it like yeah, exploration yeah, sorry. or? Yeah, hmm. it's like third person exploration. Okay. Um, you know, like in Fallout where you can like pick stuff yes. up and like put it. Oh, okay, in places. examine it. Yeah. Yeah, you can like pick stuff up, examine it, and like kind of do like little puzzles. They're not like super duper hard. It's like, oh yeah, you have to like, oh there's like north, east, south, and west. You have to like make these paintings, like go and like do this thing. And you can actually jump in between universes by going through portals like that are usually hidden. So oh. like again, like I said, it's not Silent Hill. So you're in the real dimension, like our world, and then you go through a portal, and it's like the the other world in Silent Hill where it's like all like rusty and stuff. But in this world, like the, the like underground. All, yeah, it's like it's like the upside down basically. Yeah. Like it's all overgrown and it's misty and it's creepy and sometimes there's like an actual like scary creature that's trying to like catch you and stuff. Yeah. So you have to like run away from them. It's like a char- it's like a creature with like a spotlight for a head and if it sees you it just like runs at you and like grabs you and kills oh! you. So one hit kills. I think I'm saying there's, sorry? About there's technically Siren Head and he's got another brother called Lamphead if you're looking at the actual like sp- creepy pasta. Yeah, cuz those those are the SCPs, aren't they? No. Yes. So, so, no. no kind of so those are no. just regular monsters. They're not SCPs. Okay, but that one that one it came from the internet though. It was like yeah, it's it came, an, it's yeah, Slender the, Man. The Siren Head Lamphead thing came from the internet. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, they turned this, it into a game. Yeah, they basically turned it into a game. This one it says that it takes a lot of um I read an article where it said it like took a lot of um uh, inspiration from like Twin Peaks, which if you're saying that you're taking inspiration from Twin Peaks, you might as well be saying that you're taking inspiration from Silent Hill because they're like the same franchise. Who cares anyway? Twin Peaks came out <laughs> in, like, the 80s. Yeah, exactly. And Silent Hill is basically based off Twin Peaks. So here we are. Um, so as you're playing as Edward, you're finding all these articles about this girl who was bullied so relentlessly in her school that they actually cut her brake lines on her bike and she died. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Um, so as you're exploring this town and stuff, there are creatures in the darkness. So you turn off a light and there's creatures there and you can see them. And it's just people that have been like affected by the the um the thing that happened after um this girl's mom summoned a, basically a demon from hell to like kind of ease her pain. She wanted to try and like either like bring her daughter back, but she ended up communicating with a different demon. Oh, and so this okay. demon she came. Went down that yeah. He's like, I must save Spooky my daughter. Uh, release yeah. demons into the earth. Okay. Yeah, so these demons take over us humans, and now we hide in the darkness. And when you turn off the light, um, they're, like, there to kill you. If you step into the darkness, like, even a little bit, they'll, like, just shank you and you die. So you have to really, like, kind of, um, like, figure out these puzzles in a way where you can stay in the light, like, at all times. Yeah. Um, which is hard, because sometimes the light will flicker, and you're like, oh, no, I'm going to die, um, which is really fun, like... Uh, so you can see them constantly. So there's like always like this kind of like I have to stay in the light. You know, I have to like figure out my route on how to get to this next part. Meanwhile, like the entire town of Dormont is being is like shut down. So and then you start hearing this voice, and this voice is actually coming from the demon that was summoned. Um, and he is like the he's like a judge basically and depending on your decisions he'll condemn or redeem the people that were responsible basically for covering up this little girl's death so there's like one of the kids uh it's like all the kids parents that were involved Mm -hmm. so you can choose like the first person that you choose to redeem or, or condemn is like one of the kids that was involved with bullying her um and you find (laughs) <laughs> he was the only person that I actually redeemed, I think. I don't remember. I got the good ending, though, um, oh. when I played through. Um, and uh, you find out that this kid, his, like, his brother died, and his father was never around, and his, like, father, like, beat him and stuff, and it's like, oh, my God, like, no wonder why you were lashing out at this poor little girl. Like, oh, my God. Bah. Um, And then there's, like, something, like, you find out that the mailman was, like, actually, like, keeping all of um this woman's letters to like the government basically saying like hey my daughter was killed and i think that's not right oh it was so in on the actually... conspiracy to cover it so up so he was 
yeah, he was on the, like, he was like in on the conspiracy to cover it up, but he was actually being like blackmailed by like the head of police and stuff. I so I ended up, I think I ended up re um, redeeming like the fire chief who seemed to be like the only person with any redeemable qualities out of like the adults. The other ones I was just like, no, you're an adult, you know better, how dare you, condemn, kill them all, <laughs> literally Megan go to hell. punishes all. Um, and I, I don't remember exactly. But nobody like hates my... the fire department. <laughs> it's true. The fire police. I forget exactly who I can, I know I, I know for a fact that I condemned the police chief because I was like, you're literally the police chief, how dare you condemn um, I think I might have redeemed the rest of them because they were, like, actually being blackmailed in some way, shape, or form. Um, yeah. And, like, I actually did not like this game because it was, it was, it had a really good concept. It was really, like, it was a really, really, really good concept, but it just like, didn't... Story, conceptually, it sounds pretty cool, where you're, like, you're just going through the, the darkest time yeah. of this town. Conceptually, it's, like, super fantastic. I love, like, the idea of it, and there's, like, parts where you, like, go through, like, the other world, and you're finding, like, all this, like, dark history of Dormont, and you're seeing, like, this demon wasn't actually, like, the first time it was brought into this world and stuff, like, it was really actually, like, somebody did it, like, like, a hundred years ago or something, and, like, again, like I said, it was, like, basically another like play on like the Silent Hill games, like, where yeah. it's, like, oh, hey, this town has a dark history, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah, like, there was a lot of times where I was like, wow, I really like this part. But there was also, like, the fact that the gameplay was so infuriating. And some of the were, puzzles... Like, really clunky? Yeah, or, like, really clunky. And some of the puzzles were just, like, you had to, like, figure them out on your own. Like, you had to, like, flick on something. And then it's just, like, but there was no way to, like, kind of direct you to that. Like, there was no... Like, puzzles are supposed to give you, like, little little hints and stuff, right? Totally they were intuitive. Yeah, like, the way... This game basically was made by Rob. Yeah, yeah Rob's puzzles aren't always intuitive. We've experienced that. <laughs> Where in Rob's head, definite... it makes complete sense. In anybody else's head, it's like, what the... How did you put that together? Guinness <laughs> record made perfect sense. You just focused on record instead of Guinness. That was your fault. No, it wasn't. <laughs> We've been over this. The reason why that one didn't work is because that item was not supposed to be in the studio whatsoever. Yes. It wasn't even supposed to be present, and the fact that you used it to your advantage was absolute BS. I just didn't think like a Rob. No. No, you just didn't think like a person who's supposed to be following the rules, Robert. Actually, I'm going to blame Megan. Megan, you should have thought about digging through the trash. <laughs> okay, for sure. You should have yeah. You should have did. Full you guys did. We did. We did. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Then and my first Megan. thought, it's not your fault. my you first thought was, oh, well, it can't possibly be that because we're not allowed to have that here. We're Same. not allowed. Ooh. Yeah, so I'm sorry, but I'm not a one at fault here, and Rob was using that to his advantage. Anyways. Uh, I love how many so, years it's been, and I'd still get you guys with that. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? If we were married, I would have divorced you by now. <laughs> because of this! Because of this! Nothing else. Just that one thing <laughs> years ago, festering and boiling, driving Megan mad. Insane. Psychotic. A little, a little aroused, but mostly angry. <laughs> Rob, no one feels aroused by you. Oh, oh, oh. I'm dabbing for you, but sadly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh. Back to um, Edward. <laughs> Edward Turner. This guy has the best name ever. Oh gosh. Um honestly like the best part of this game was the whole like aesthetic of like the creatures like lurking in the darkness. I mm. didn't like the whole chase like being chased by Lamphead. That was terrifying. I mean, it's saw you in the... scary though. Yeah, like if they saw you in the slightest, like the music would just change like immediately. And it would just be like dun, 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 and they would just come for you and you would die. It was awful. <laughs> Sorry? That's funny. Just like the yeah. immediate, like, and we're dead. Yeah, literally. Literally, if they saw you, like, at all, you were just done. I don't know. Reading some of the stuff, too, like, 
you could tell that there was actually like a lot of uh like spelling errors and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually very genuine, which I I kind of liked. I don't know. Like I would love to revisit this if it was like if if they did like a couple more games and they kind of refined it somewhat some somewhere and it was like maybe more f funded better for them. I feel like it would be an even better game. Like, you know what I mean? It, yeah, I mean, I like, it, story-wise, it sounds kind of interesting. Uh, but, yeah, if if the, the puzzles aren't intuitive and they're just... Uh, controls are a big pet peeve for a lot of people. Like, if it controls yeah. bad, the game's not fun because then you can't really connect with it. Why Super yeah. Mario 64 sucks? Hey, I will fight you. I am so good at Mario 64. Ah. Uh... It's, it's I play it's hard. it so that I play yeah I can I play, play it all... I, there is nothing wrong with the camera I have I have had no trouble with with toggling that camera I don't know what your guys' problem is no, that's camera like shy. The, the most common use for like bad camera in a game yeah it's no. Super Mario 64 wow because you know what honestly I would I had never had a single problem with the Mario 64 camera like I'm really good at using it I don't know maybe I'm just really good <laughs> maybe it's Maybelline I will just I'm okay so like when my sister watches me play Super Mario 64 it actually stresses her right out like she gets like maximum anxiety because of how chaotically I play that game <laughs> maybe, maybe they fixed it for the switch who knows uh no no as far as I heard uh my my friend actually posted about it. it's like man why didn't they update the camera for this I forgot how frustrating it was cool they just left it in its garbage state dun, 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 it's uh, one of those things where they weren't perfect but if you look at 3D games before Super Mario 64 and some of the ideas they had to control a camera or to put things into 3D, it was really bad. Nintendo set the groundwork for at least the idea of what they wanted with the camera, and then eventually we figured it out to be able to rather auto-center on the back if you were having it free-spin with another uh, analog stick. Yeah, I just... I've never had a problem with that camera. I don't know. Maybe you. I'm just too good. I'm just too good. <laughs> Yeah, guys, um, get good, like Megan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, guys, get good. <laughs> um, this game, I don't know what it was, but like, there was just a lot of moments in the game while I was playing it where I was just so infuriated. I just, I wanted, I kept playing it, and then by the end of it, I was like, I literally, <laughs> I took it out of the tray and I put it back in the case and I brought it back to work. I was like, I don't want to see this game again. And we're done here. <laughs> so what about you kyle uh what, what have you been up to this week yeah so speaking of shows that involve megan <laughs> <laughs> what we had been discussing and watching um close enough <laughs> which so what's the that the, okay so it's it's the I same people who yet. made a uh, regular show which is like the best show ever oh. Yeah, so I don't know if you recognize, but, like, the main dude is Mordecai from uh, the regular show, like, The Bird. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so he's that, and then you have, you know, it's a pretty good cast overall. Uh, Pimento's in it, too, from 9-9. From Nine Nine. But, um, essentially, it follows the life of two married people, uh, a divorced couple, and the married people's children. Yes. Child, child I guess. Singular. Child. Yeah. Singular, Singular. child. So the, the child it's, um, yeah, Josh, Emily, and Candace is the ma the family that we're following, and then it's um Alex and oh boy, I forgot the Japanese girl's name. I I did too, but it's it's okay. okay. It's okay. She's the it's influencer. Okay. Yes. The well, quote unquote influencer, I guess, would be the better part to put that at. But it's it's basically just random adventures with them and what like things that happen. Uh, Josh is, makes video games and yeah. installs TVs. Ooh. It, I, you would say tech support, but literally he only installs TVs through the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> Just I mean, TVs. That's probably the, the most guy. common thing I think they get called for is you're just laying wire and hanging the TV. <laughs> but it's, it's just wild to watch him like 
he do his job. He's just just that. Uh, I don't think the wife has. Does she have a job? Yes, she does. She works for um this company that cans food. She works for a canned food company. Wait, doesn't she work for the school? No. No. She, she uh, her her and the Japanese girl are like musicians on the side. Right, so they like write music and stuff, like kind of like uh, Garfunkel and Oates kind of style stuff, where yeah. they like do like parody music. Like oh yeah, Weird Al was like in an episode. To... Literally, Weird Al was in an episode. He was fantastic. Nice. Um and uh, yeah, she's been she cameoing like, a this... lot. He's been getting around. Yeah. And I know that she works for this canned food company. She's the uh, the boss's like secretary, but she's like literally running the company like for him. Whereas he like he's like taking all of like what she says and saying it himself, trying to claim it as his own idea kind of thing. Oh yeah, you're a smart businessman. <laughs> and then, so yeah, she has a pretty decent job. Candace is the five year old who scr struggles with schoolwork. Has a whole episode based around the answering questions right, but instead of doing that, she just hacks the robot because of Josh. Yeah, her Josh teaches her how to like hack into like the code and stuff. It's really good. She did learn to spell though from from that episode. And you know what? I love that episode because it shows that not all kids like learn in a specific way. Like the way that she was learning how to spell was very visual in her memory. You know, she was she was saw Alex reading this the self esteem book, and that gave her the the self. And then something else had like a D on it in her memory, so she saw the E and then. A struct, and then she saw that in her memory, and she was able to spell out self destruct. <laughs> yep. Uh, the the guy who's like plays the mentor, like the crazy guy, Alex. Is the, is <laughs> he's, a, the, he's a college professor, he's or a university professor. professor, and Viking <laughs> enthusiast. He does crazy very uh, well. Don't forget, he's a Viking enthusiast. <laughs> he's so good. He's what, that uh, can go a couple uh, of ways. It comes up in the plot professor? quite a lot. Yeah, he's an anthropology uh, professor. So good. Uh, Bridget, so good. I think, is the friend's name. That's yes, it's, it is Bridget, and they live with this. They live in this apartment building with the old lady Pearl and her uh, son. Pearl and yeah, Randy. That's her, her son. Yeah. Yeah, Pearl and Randy. So so good. Um, one of my favorite episodes was Alex and Bridget and Josh and Emily go to a bar which is supposed to be like oh my god hippin and hoppin and bippin and boppin and it's like all like all the all the zoomer kids are there and they're partying and they're getting like super like drunk and like messed up on like you know super drugs and stuff and Alex goes on this trip because he was given like some drugs or whatever but at the yeah. end of the episode Alex is like, I remember Blockbuster. What's I been... am old, and I was like, Hey, that's what, Rob. What <laughs> happened was, was in the bar, somebody showed like, like an older dude showed up and tried to like be all hip and cool. Hey, man, and... can I get a double IPA? Yeah. <laughs> my favorite band is Rush. <laughs> and then it showed up that he was over thirty, so therefore he was a <laughs> VIP access, which is um, like a very unimportant, very person. important person. Very it, no, it was like. It was something else on like on the word, but uh, essentially what happens was they were led to a chair, uh, lifted up into the sky into a whirling blade of death where it killed the th people above thirty. Yeah. <laughs> so, so again, that, we should tell people that this this show isn't like that, that wasn't regular. the direction. It's not for, wait, 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 a no, no, regular no, no, show. No, no, give me a second here, Megan. Give me a second here. Yeah. Because everything leading up to that. Did not give me the impression that that was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time burying that lead. You know, it's like, oh, you know, coming of age story, going to the bar, the Zoom is blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, and then whirling blades of death that they throw 30 year olds into. <laughs> okay, so, so maybe we should tell like... the listeners, yeah, that this is not a regular show. This what is yeah. a regular show. It's close enough. But... As like a real life like family age story, like the stuff that happens real in this show is random. Okay. <laughs> it's called Logan's, and it's eventually discovered that the bartender is actually like fifty years 50? old and named it after Logan's Run. Yeah. <laughs> so there's there's that whole thing, and then they like yeah, 
track them down, and, and then Alex like sacrifice sacrifices himself before discovering that the bartender was yeah. old. So, like in the first episode, for example, you find out, oh no, Candace is struggling with her schoolwork. She doesn't have like a proper family like life. We were, we we kept telling you guys because she's like in a, ex- a more expensive school. Like they had to pull her out of the public school, I guess, because the kids literally like tipped a bus and set it on fire. Yep. Um, and like her her teacher is like this like ooh new age hippy dippy guy with like a man bun and oh I'm so sorry it doesn't seem like Candace is doing very well. Um, we're just worried that she hasn't contributed to the family quilt. And then so. Emily and Josh are like freaking out. They have to go to like this market, the fashion district or whatever, and get thread and fabric. And they're trying to like negotiate with the thread and fabric people. And Josh ends up getting like this parrot that like looks like him. And he calls him BJ Bird Josh. <laughs> to be fair, I would be Josh in this situation where you give me one specific th- task. His job was get thread. That's it. Thread. And I would get everything but thread. I'd come in a new suit with a bird going, oh my god. (laughs) Oh my god, Emily, I'm sorry that I ended up spending all my time instead of looking for thread, looking for zoot suits and BJs for Josh. (laughs) (laughs) And, like, they ended up finding, like, this little, like, group of orphans who end up making the quilt for them, and then at the end of the day, it's revealed that they're, like, all these old, shriveled little people who are, like, not children and they keep like calling them their parents and stuff and then yeah it's just basically this whole idea of like they feel like they're bad parents because they're not helping candace with her schoolwork when literally she just needs to just do it herself kind of thing like they can't just keep like butting into her life all the time right like the, she's gotta do her thing she's still a kid but you have to instead of just doing the stuff for them you have to let them do it themselves and give them guidance this show is actually really fantastic for anyone who's like had kids, helped raise kids, etc., etc., etc. Swim. Or, I ain't no helicopter parents. Yeah. Literally, how my yeah. dad told me to swim. He threw me in the deep end and said, "Swim or die." It seems you never <laughs> well, really learned the deep end. I learned to swim. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but here's the thing. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna start. You. If I'm a, if I'm teaching a kid how to swim, I've taught a lot of kids how to swim. Like oh, I've actually, I'm not a very, very strong swimmer myself, but I've taught a lot of kids like how to doggy paddle at least. It's and I've like started there. them, yeah, like I've started them in like the, the shallow end, just being like, you got to cup your hands like this and you got to kick your legs like this. Okay, cool. I'm not going to just chuck them in the deep end because how are you supposed to know how to drive a car if you don't know how to brake yet? You know what I mean? My dad would do this. Hey, Robert, hit and go. <laughs> Why Robert's right. so chaotic? Okay, Robert, we've hit ninety. I take the wheel. Put it in age. Andrew, put it in age. That's how my dad taught me to drive, swim. Most of the stuff is just like sink or swim. Uh, Do it. Rob, today you learned to shave. Here's sharp blade. Go have fun. <laughs> What was the exact? Do you remember what your favorite episode was, Kyle? Chris? Um, I think it was the the skateboard one. Get the dad. Get the gooch. The gooch. The gooch. No, it wasn't the gooch. It was the goosh. No, it's the goosh now. When I skate, it sounds like goosh. The goosh. Uh, so he, you know, he essentially is trying to teach his daughter how to skateboard, and you know. Wipes out so hard he has to get a metal plate installed on his on his gooch. On his taint. On his right in the middle. <laughs> Did he get a metal plate there? Yeah, he had, he had a metal plate. Does that and, mean he uh, can grind? Oh, uh, it actually comes up later where he like lands on it and like starts on fire because he's like skating <laughs> so fast down a hill. It, it's 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 fantastic and he's like super jealous of the gooch for like trying to teach his daughter how to skateboard and be all like, cool and rad and stuff. Yeah, that guy. Radical. Tubular. Either Not that really one or the, the last one with the dog. The dog, <gasps> dog boy. Dog boy. Yeah, the not Mr. Peanut Butter that looks like Shaggy. They, they celebrate an anniversary at Medieval Times slash Jim Carrey celebration. 
Yeah, this is, this is this. To be fair, this is a bro anniversary. This is Alex and Josh's anniversary. Where they go every year to to medieval times and celebrate making Jim Carrey references, like uh, the Cable Guy was the first one. <laughs> they, when they make references to that all the time. Okay, but that sounds awesome, Andrew. If we celebrate our bro anniversary, wouldn't medieval times be a good place to do it? I would absolutely. I I haven't been to a medieval times yet. I would always just <gasps> see it on our <gasps> video and our no! top ten, and then I go, man, it, that looks like a great grand prize. It's actually not as interesting as you think. Okay, I don't know okay, you. hey, hey, Kyle, I'm gonna fight you because I was eleven. I was an eleven year old girl, and I was chosen by one of the knights to be the princess. Okay, I'll fight oh, if you. I got chosen to be the princess. It was three both times, and all three times I was just like. All right. It was literally both me and my sister got chosen, okay? So it was like magical for us, and I will fight you guys. Yes, Andrew, we can go on our birth. We can go on our birthdays and get stuff. Oh, maybe we'll get to fight each other like they did in the Cable Guy. I will not <laughs> hold back. Chris, did you have a favorite episode? Probably Dog Boy. Dog Boy, yeah. Yeah. It was, a, it was a good yeah, time. Yeah, uh, I, I saw it hit Netflix. I hadn't checked it out yet, but uh, I'm going to watch it now. Just it because... is so so good. It's definitely up your alley. It's not a regular show, but it's close <laughs> enough. <laughs> and that's my cue to leave. On that think... note, folks, we do have to wrap up our own show here, guys. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, if you want to continue the conversation online, you can do so on our Facebook page at facebook.com/slash Thunder Geek Speak. Or follow us on our other social media. Kyle, of course, has been uh, streaming games on twitch.tv slash frozenfire727. And Chris, you have our birthday stream coming up on this Thursday. See. Si. Want to plug that for us one more time. It'll be on uh, twitch.tv slash Chris the Tripod. Probably around four. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in.